As most of us know, uh, our planet is going through a lot of changes. Climate change, biodiversity declines, polluted oceans, intensive land use, and so on. But Earth is a big place. And there is one tool at our disposal that provides us with the big picture about the health of our planet. And that tool is Earth observing satellites. And we're in a revolution of sorts when it comes to Earth observation that's been a long time in the making. In 1957, when the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite, it opened up the era of Earth observation. And as you would expect from the height of the Cold War, a lot of these satellites had、uh, secret military objectives. And their data were classified and not available to the public. In 1972, NASA launched Landsat 1, which was the first civilian satellite to provide global coverage of the Earth's land surface. Since then, satellites have really transformed how we see and what we know about our planet. In particular, satellites have really shown us how our planet is changing. I think we're living in a golden age when it comes to Earth observation. And I say this for four main reasons. The first reason is that over the past 10 years, more satellites, more civilian satellites have been launched into orbit than at any decade prior. And it's getting increasingly more cost effective to build, launch, and deploy satellites. For example, CubeSats, like the one you see that's being built in this image, are, bigger, are about as big as a loaf of bread and are made of commercial grade、uh, electronic components that are relatively inexpensive. The second reason is free and open access to satellite data. In 2008, NASA opened up its Landsat archive going back to 1972, that launch you saw earlier. And every Landsat data since then will be free to the public. Similarly,、uh, the European Commission's Copernicus program, which has several, pro- several satellites in orbit at the moment and several more are planned in the future, is also based on an open data policy. Other countries that have national space programs, like Japan, for example, also provide some of their satellite data available to the public. What all this means is increased accessibility to satellite data and data products for the public. The third reason is the growth of、uh, parallel computing and increase in processing power. Think about it. It was only 15 years ago that Intel launched、uh, the Pentium D, which was its first consumer grade、uh, dual core processor. Today, you can get a processor with roughly eight times the number of cores for about the same price as in 2005. On top of that, we have tech behemoths like Google and Amazon and Microsoft that provide、uh, cloud computing infrastructure where、uh, you can get、uh, near unlimited. Uh, space for,、uh, for satellite data, as well as insane computing power for relatively low price. The fourth and final reason I think we're in a golden age is、uh, the increasing popularity of machine learning and shared knowledge repositories. The thing about machine learning is that it is capable of extracting information. And patterns from satellite data with、uh, increasing levels of accuracy. And access to machine learning has never been easier than it is today.、Uh, there are tons of online tutorials and shared knowledge repositories like、uh, GitHub, where people post,、uh, post their code for others to use and build upon. And there are also、uh, structured online programs、uh, like Udemy or Coursera for anyone who wants to delve deeper into machine learning. 
All of this has been great for science. Uh, we've been able to uh, map and quantify and measure aspects of our planet that we never thought were possible 20, 30 years ago. For example, in the last couple of years, uh, we've been able to uh, map uh, whales in the world's oceans, trees in the deserts, individual elephants in complex savanna landscapes, and even albatrosses, which are large seabirds on remote islands in the Antarctic. In a way, satellites have become sort of a macroscope on our planet, engaging its health. But you're probably wondering, what does this mean? What does all this mean? What does it mean for you to be in this golden age of Earth observation? It means a real democratization of data and science. It means that anybody with a computer and an internet connection can download satellite data, process it using open source tools, and extract information for their own use. It's that simple and is right at our fingertips. To give you an example of what this combination can do, these 13 lines of code that you see here uh, uh, produce an index that can tell you how green any given location on Earth is. This is from Google's online platform called Earth Engine, where with just a Google account, users can manipulate large amounts of satellite data at global scales. You don't even have to write a single line of code because lots of examples like this are already provided, and the data is there as well. This one uses data from the Landsat 8 satellite. So you're probably wondering, like, what does this index of greenness look like, right? It looks like this, where the green areas show you healthy, vegetated areas, uh, the brown and the yellow are either stressed or no vegetation. And because it's an image from a single season, the white areas are, are places that are covered by clouds. And in a lot of ways, a few lines of code is really all you need to extract information like this from satellite data. And you can do it globally and it has real practical applications for landscape planning or for conservation. You can even use it to assess the quality of life in cities as research has shown that greener neighborhoods have higher quality of life. Other examples include merging different kinds of satellite data to map different aspects of the land surface. For example, here, where uh, users can merge uh, optical satellite data with data on the elevation of the land surface, combine it in a ready-made, ready-to-go algorithm called principal component analysis to extract geologic maps for uh, exploration of minerals, for example. You can also go back in time, because we do have that archive going back 50 years, and see the development of road networks. You can go online, download data from the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and see how the urbanization took place in a city, for example, like Dubai, over here. Or maybe you live in a rural setting and you're interested to find out the distribution of crops in your area. So you go to the fields, you take a few samples of the crop types, sunflowers here, beets there, cereals there. You combine that information with satellite data in a machine learning framework and you map the crop distribution where you live. Let's be honest, we don't know our planet as much as we think we do. And because of this, the possibilities of what can be done with satellite data are truly exciting. With all this uh, data and tools readily available, we're really accelerating the rate at which uh, scientific discoveries are made. So the two things I want you to get from this presentation, the two takeaways are that satellite data are available and they're accessible to you. Thank you very much.